I know I give it a bad rap, but this is McDonald's breakfast. This is serious. And we will not be missing. Okay, so today we're making the McDonald's Egg McMuffin. This has to be one of the most simplified breakfast sandwiches on the market physically possible. Yet it has an enormous amount of clout as usual. It's always the menu items that have so much unnecessary clout. You know, if you don't know the McMuffin, which I would be shocked if you didn't, but it's basically English muffins toasted, usually poorly, American cheese, ham, and then this like egg cylinder that's horrifically overcooked. It's a hockey puck, basically. So we're gonna recreate it the best way possible while maintaining that original look, and we're gonna win. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? We're back at it again. Mac Dan I said this before. The other day I heard somebody say McDonald's again. Stop. Can I just get one Egg McMuffin? I noted this last time, but they're really good about speed here. I mean, obviously that's what they're known for. Thank you. You're Jesus, you see that? It just like came right out. He's like, muffin, bitch. <laughs> okay, we have the bag. There's a little bit of nostalgia. Oh my God. What is that smell? Oh! You know what's funny is I haven't eaten at all today yet, and so just like the idea of food being around me, my mouth was starting to water and I was getting hungry. When I smelled that, all the saliva retracted back into my body. It was like, you need this for something else. Somebody come sniff this. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's stinky. That's, it smells like an airport bathroom. That is the most accurate thing I've ever heard in my life. So we got Canadian bacon, looks fine. American cheese. This egg has been here for so long. You can see this like little greenish, brownish, dark color. That's because the egg has been sitting cooked for way too long and then it was microwaved. It's just boring. I mean, what do you want me to say? It's just, it, it has to be the most boring choice physically possible for breakfast. It's easy, I get it. A lot of people go out in the drive-thru and they're like, oh, I'm so hungry, I just get a quick one. But you never think about it again. I wanna make something that you think about forever. Okay, if we're gonna one-up a McMuffin, we're probably gonna wanna make our own muffin. Or, well, English muffin in this case. Which are not actually called English muffins in England. Anyway, start off with two cups or 480 milliliters of whole milk, around 90 to 95 Fahrenheit, and to that you're gonna whisk in two and a half teaspoons or eight grams of instant yeast, three and a half tablespoons or 45 grams of granulated sugar, whisk it all together until dissolved, and let it sit for about five minutes or until frothy. Now, rassle your sail, a stand mixer, and to the bowl of that you're gonna add four and a third cup or 675 grams of bread flour, and two teaspoons or eight grams of fine sea salt. Begin mixing that with the dough hook attachment, then once incorporated, go ahead and add your sugary yeasty milk, followed by a quarter cup or 56 grams of very lightly melted butter. Seriously, make sure this butter is just barely melted. If it's beyond 100 degrees, it'll kill your yeast, and papa never forgive you. Oh, and also one whole egg. Now continue to mix that until it forms a nice smooth dough, then lightly grease a bowl. If needed, you can give your dough a couple slap and folds to help give it some extra strength, then shape it into a light ball, pop it into your grease bowl, cover with plastic wrap, give them a true gel gentleman's name and let that rise at room temperature for about one hour or until doubled and chonky. Now take your chonky man and punch all the air out of him, then divide the dough into about 15 pieces. You can get more precise by weighing the whole dough in grams and dividing that by 15. Voila, you have your grammage per piece. Now once you have all your pieces, shape each and every one of those into balls, place your nice round balls in either a dough proof box or in baking sheet, either of which need to be dusted with cornmeal, cover with a lid and let those rest for 10 minutes. Now all you gotta do is take a ball, dust the top and the bottom with cornmeal, flatten them so you get a disc about three and a half inches wide and half an inch thick, then place them in a griddle or cast iron skillet over medium low heat and let them cook for three to five minutes. Then flip and let them cook for another three to five minutes or until golden brown and puffy. Now likely those won't be baked through yet, so once that's done, place them on a small tray and then into an oven that's been preheated to 350 Fahrenheit for about seven to 10 more minutes or until baked through. Then just repeat with all of your English muffins. I mean, look at these absolute gentlemen. Wait, they actually look like English muffins? Yes, because we gave them our love and Papa's kiss. Now let those cool in a wire rack completely and that's it. Now next up, let's talk ham. Sure, you could go buy Canadian bacon that's already prepped for you. Instead, I've acquired an entire smoked ham. I do this so I can slice it to the thickness of my desires. I ended up going a half inch thick per slice. But wait a minute, Josh. What about the circular shape? Shh, shh, shh. 
you're gonna use the circular biscuit cutter the exact same size as your English muffins to then punch out the perfectly sized round of thick cut ham. Now all you gotta do is heat a medium sized skillet over medium high heat, hit that with about three tablespoons of vegetable oil, and once the oil is hot, hot, add in your ham in batches to avoid overcrowding and let it sear for about two minutes. You can also use something to weigh it down, like the chef press, which I love. Then flip and sear for another two to three minutes. Now toss in a small bundle of fresh thyme, three tablespoons, or 42 grams of unsalted butter, and baste your ham for about 25 seconds. Now place your hot ham on a small tray, cover it with the thyme butter, and repeat with the rest. Now before we make the coveted egg, let's make a quick spicy mayo, which I know is untraditional, stop complaining, the sandwich needs one, okay? Now get a small bowl and add half a cup or 112 grams of mayonnaise, a quarter cup or 60 grams of creme fraiche, one tablespoon or eight grams of smoked paprika, one tablespoon or nine grams of garlic powder, two and a half tablespoons or 37 grams of sriracha, and two teaspoons or seven grams of Worcestershire sauce. Uh, uh, now whisk together and that's your spicy mayo. Wow, so easy, Josh. Yes, I know, you're welcome. Now last but not least, we gotta fix this downright depressing so-called egg in the McMuffin. Snag a small nonstick skillet, heat it up over medium heat, and add just enough unsalted butter to coat the bottom of the pan, about one and a half tablespoons or 20 grams. As soon as that's melted and boobling, place a ring mold that's been lightly greased and is the same diameter as your English muffins in the center of your pan. Carefully crack one egg into that mold, season the top with salt, and let that cook for about 30 seconds or until the white at the bottom begins to set nicely. Then add three tablespoons or 45 milliliters of water around the mold so it comes to a boil, then immediately cover with foil or a lid and let that steam for about 45 seconds or until the egg is just cooked through but the yolk is still running. Now immediately remove that egg from the pan and repeat with however many eggs you need. I made five sandwiches, so I did five eggs. That's the best math I've done this year. Okay, it's time to assemble. First, get an English muffin, fork, split it, or slice it accordingly. Give it a nice toast in a toaster. I like mine pretty deeply toasted, so before anyone's like, oh my gosh, Josh, is that brief? Look, I think it's better with a light chart. That's just my taste. Anyway, add a nice dollop of your optional spicy mayo, spread it around to coat, followed by a slice of aged cheddar cheese. I like to brush the cheese with my kitchen torch to get it a little melty. Then add your beautifully runny egg circlet, I guess? Circle? Sauce the other half of your bread, spread it around to coat, add your thyme butter basted, thicky cut ham, and finally crown your breakfast king. Now the first gaze upon the sandwich says, Lord have mercy, <laughs> I'm about to buzz. More importantly, I think we should see the inside of this. I mean, come on, look at this thing. Don't play with me. Now let's go ahead and taste test to decide on a winner, even though I think we got this one in the bag, I hope. Well, well, well. First off, we already won because it's got a juicy yolk. All right, that's the only way. And if you don't like runny yolks, that's okay. It's okay to be wrong. Mommy. I have two things to say. We won, and second, we won! What do I say? Like, the texture of the English muffin is obviously better. Fresh made, flavor is nice, it doesn't have that weird, like, refrigerator flavor. There's real cheese on this, and you can change what kind of cheese. You could do smoked gouda. That would be pretty gouda. It's actually pronounced kouda, and all the Dutch people who are watching this are probably like, Did he just say gouda? Let's get a taste tester in here! Ah! So today we have Vikram. Hey, we got the stinkiest boy in the oh game. Boy. I've cut the other one in half so you can't tell, although I think you will right away. Number one. Sorry. Sorry. Oh my God, Vikram, you missed the whole thing. Don't eat the whole thing, Jesus. And number two. Mama. Is that mama? Yours is uh, this one. It's the, I think it's the yolk that gives it away. Well, the sauce is like grape. This is really just like. You say grape just now? I wish it's like great. Okay, normally I'm not a fan of uh, runny egg, but this is like just horrible. Like this is garbage. Smoked ham, sauce, the cheese. Oh, very nice. All we gotta say is McDonald's but better. You wanna know what else is full of runny, drippy goodness and things that make you open your mouth? B-roll. <laughs> All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our Egg McMuffin. I keep wanting to say English muffin. I don't know why. I mean, there's an English muffin in there, Josh, so. The point is, this was a really easy one to do. It really wasn't that difficult to make it better. Obviously, making your own English muffins is a big deal. You can make these and use them for anything. Maybe make Eggs Benedict, which would be a better option, in my opinion, but that's literally what this is. This is like a lazy Benedict, just without the hollandaise, which, by the way, you can make it in a blender. The point is, you should absolutely make this, as I always say. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you 